Hi everybody! Today I want to show you how to apply the Limelight Botanical Foundation and I do have a video that is very similar to this. It's how to apply RCMA Foundation which for those of you that don't know RCMA makes Limelight's Botanical Foundation. The formula is identical and it's not a secret. I mean that's why a lot of pros like myself end up joining Limelight because then we can offer our clients this awesome pro-grade HD formulated foundation um, in more consumer friendly packaging. So I'll show you what that looks like right now. The Limelight Botanical Foundation comes in like a little recyclable cardboard thing like this and you've got your pan inside and it is a very generous pan size. They are magnetic so for pro artists you can build custom palettes with these. You can refill this if you do not want to waste. Pop back in there. Um, so that's what it looks like. This is the shade Shinto Zero because I'm a zero. <laughs> um, this is a yellow based shade and they do have more pink based undertones, yellow based, um, and then some very deep skin tones that have a range of undertones in those. So if you would like to see how to apply the Limelight Botanical Foundation, just keep watching. Okay, so before we begin, I have Urban Decay's Eden Eye Primer on, and I don't have any other makeup on my face. I basically primed my skin with skincare. I think for dry skin like mine, that's kind of most important, is just that I have my skin really well hydrated, but I am going to use a primer that's made to work with this foundation. So this is a spray primer. This is Limelight's first base makeup primer spray. Um, now you don't have to use this one. There's a lot of primer sprays out now. Smashbox makes one called Primer Water and then like Scandinavia is who makes this. Again, not a secret, Scandinavia makes Limelight's um, primer and setting sprays, um, but they have their, their own as well. So whatever primer spray you want to use, this you are just going to spray like in a, what is this, a T and an X shape. That's kind of to ensure you get all the areas of your face. You can do a little extra oh gosh, and inhale it if you feel like you need to. I tend to see people go a little too crazy with this and you know, save your money. I don't think you need to like spray 10 sprays of this. So just make sure you have nice even coverage. And there is kind of a misconception, or not a misconception, people disagree um, as to whether or not you should use silicone based primers with this foundation. This foundation is a wax based foundation and is a cream formula. So some people think that the silicone and the wax don't play nice together. I will tell you that um, I don't follow all the rules and I have used silicone based primers with this and it's just fine. Um, and in my original RCMA video, I use a silicone based primer. Ooh. Um, I've done it a lot on clients, especially when they do need that silicone based pore minimization here or like for mature skin with fine lines and wrinkles. I think as long as you're not like overusing it, it's probably fine. So you can apply the Limelight Botanical Foundation um, several ways. First way would be using your clean fingers. So, you know, I know like my mom loves to put foundation on with her hands and if you're one of those people, you can absolutely get right in there and um, it blends really well because it's wax based. It blends like better sometimes with your fingers because of your body heat, it warms it up. So that's the first way with your clean fingers. Second way would be with brushes. I have some back here, so I'm grabbing them because I have a few different styles. Some people prefer different ways. Um, so you could apply with a flat top Kabuki. This is um, very similar to like the Sigma F80 or I don't, this is like some off brand, um, but this is nice because it's got that flat top. You can dip it right into your pan and then stipple and buff it on that way. Or you could go the duo fiber route. Limelight makes a brush like this. It's just way similar or way smaller and um, I can't find it right now. I literally lost an entire brush roll between all like my freelance jobs and I'm really sad about it. Um, so anyways, this is a similar brush. So this one's got more flex to the bristles, which is better for maybe a little lighter coverage where you're not trying to like pack and stipple on as much. So there's the duo fiber brush method. This is kind of become one of my favorite brushes to use if I go the brush route. And this is from e.l.f. It's called their ultimate blending brush. My only problem with this brush is that it does shed. I'm starting to see some of these poke up here, but this is a very affordable brush. I wouldn't expect it to last as well as my like pricier brushes. But this is more of a domed head 
which I think is nice to, again, you know, tap in there and really buff it on, but it seems to be a little like gentler. I feel like the dome helps to sort of like, um, get around the contours of your face maybe a little better than the flat top kabuki ones then of course there is the traditional foundation brush style um hold on i'll grab it it's like right over there <laughs> okay i got it so this would be the traditional foundation brush style this is like a flat more um paint brush style type of brush um this is from limelight this is their like foundation brush i think this you're going to use more in in painterly like strokes I find that I can use this on like younger skin that doesn't have a lot of texture and I'm not so worried about like brush strokes, but um, on my skin, this, it kind of takes too long and it doesn't build the coverage the way I want. So then the last method would be to apply with a damp beauty sponge. So this one's from Real Techniques. Limelight sells one called a Blenderful. Of course, there's the OG Beauty Blender, which I love. Now I do use these on myself, so for personal use, but if I were to be doing this in my um, client use, um, I don't use damn beauty sponges anymore, but I love them for personal application, especially on dry, sensitive skin. If you have rosacea or just prone to getting redness, I love damp sponges because they are really the least abrasive way to apply foundation. They're really nice and gentle and for dry skin because they are slightly damp not wet um you are going to get a little bit of hydration so i prefer this method that's the way i'm going to show you because my skin type likes it best and before we get into it i will tell you one other thing some people like they get so mad over me using a damp sponge because it's a wax based foundation and they say water and wax don't mix yeah they don't so that's kind of the nice thing so the water um doesn't mix together with the foundation it lays it down and um it kind of repels the foundation onto my skin i don't have a problem with it i love applying it this way and i do it all the time so to each his or her own if you don't think that um the wax and water will mix then don't do it i just showed you a bunch of other methods you could pick one of those so if you would like if you would like to see me apply with a sponge just Okay, watching. Okay, so the sponge method is really easy because you can literally put your sponge directly into your pan and kind of turn it, um, I don't know, maybe not even full clockwise, three quarter turn in there, get the end of your sponge um, loaded up with your foundation. And then I literally just start to stipple it on. I'm not using any rubbing motions because first of all, I'm not trying to move it around. I'm building coverage where I need it. And for me, that's gonna be the sides of my face. Okay, for me, that's gonna be all over my face. <laughs> uh, there's really no area I don't need coverage these days, but you know, I just turned 34. So I guess, what do I expect? So I like to kind of do, you know, a section of my face and then I will reload my sponge. So another like three quarter turn, I guess. And again, I'm pressing, I'm stippling, I am not rubbing because that doesn't, that doesn't build up coverage, that doesn't achieve what I'm trying to do here. Um, sorry. <laughs> I will kind of show you, like I won't do my nose for a second here, and you can just see how well this is covering redness and discoloration. I mean, my nose obviously is still very red. You can see the typical like broken capillary area right here that a lot of people have redness. And I like to bring this over to my ear because your ears sometimes have redness. So if you've got an, a red ear and then your face is, you know, right here, they sometimes make your foundation look like it doesn't match, even if it does. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting some really nice coverage that still looks like skin though. That's my favorite thing about this foundation probably is that on camera and in person, it looks like skin, it doesn't look like makeup. And I've seen, you know, traditional foundation used um, next to the RCMA and I really think that the RCMA slash Limelight Botanical Foundation photographs like really nice even skin and it doesn't look like visible makeup particles on camera. So I'm a freelance makeup artist. That's really important for me, knowing that when I use this in my freelance kit, photographers, videographers, they're never gonna come up to me and say, can we you know, try to soften the appearance? Can we take away some of that powdery look? Because it just, it doesn't read as makeup on camera and that is so nice to have. And in this age where literally we're being photographed 
every day, all day with smartphones. I mean, the least amount of detection on camera, the better. So as you can see, I have not done any concealer under my eyes. I like to build all the coverage I can get with my foundation first and then kind of leave this under eye area to brighten with a concealer and I'll do a concealer anywhere else I might need it. But this foundation is 50% pigment and it covers pretty much everything. Now I do, I don't know if you can tell in this lighting, I do have like some dark spots still showing through. They're post blemish marks. And yeah, I can go back in with the concealer there. So Limelight's concealer works really well with their foundation because it's also wax based and this is what it looks like, itty bitty. Um, this is called the Complete Complete Coverage Concealer. I always get it wrong. Um, but this is made by Cryolon and that is a, another OG makeup artist staple product. So this is kind of a color correcting shade. It's shade number one and I don't know if you can tell it's kind of yellowy, almost green. Um, most people probably couldn't wear this on their face, but I am such an odd yellowish color. I can, and so sometimes I will use that to, you know, lift a little of the darkness, um, on my red areas. I probably wouldn't use it on my under eye area because it is going to look quite yellow. Um, but it's great for color correcting and I can kind of show you that if you want to see, like I would literally take a tiny amount. This is so, so pigmented and just kind of, you know, color correct the darkest, most purplish red part of my under eye circles. Um, I'm actually gonna use a different concealer for this. Okay, so for concealer, I kind of just grabbed the first one that I could reach, and then my voice did a weird puberty thing. Um, so this is uh, what it, LA Girl Pro Conceal. Um, it's not like my favorite concealer ever, but if you're looking for an affordable one, it does a really nice job. So this is mine, so that's why I'm using the applicator directly. So you can kind of paint it on and then use your damp sponge again to blend it in. I like to look all the way up so that I can make sure I'm getting right under my lash line where I and lots of people do have redness, especially if you have allergies or you didn't sleep well last night. So as you can see, this is a like liquid cream concealer, but it um, plays very nicely with the RCMA wax based foundation. That's another thing I really love about this foundation is that you know, it's totally fine to not be brand loyal. I'm not, I mean, I use so many different brands and I've never had a product that didn't seem to sit well on top or under this. So it's just very versatile as well. So we've brightened up under our eyes and now um, I want to talk about setting this foundation. So I do think it needs set. It is a cream, it's emollient, it, it's made of botanical waxes. So it does need some setting to make sure that it doesn't slide around, and even though I have really dry skin, I still need to set it. So Limelight makes a pressed version of this, but I'm gonna show you the original RCMA No Color Powder. Um, this is obviously made by RCMA, same manufacturer as the foundation. This is a loose powder, and it has no color, so it looks very white, but there's actually no color pigment in this. I put it in my hand. Um, you can work off of a palette or something else if you want, but um, I like to set my under eye concealer with it first so that it doesn't have a chance to crease. So I will put it onto my damp, damp beauty sponge and smooth any creases out and then go under there, press it on. I don't um, do the baking thing with powder because I have really dry skin and I find it only accentuates how dry my skin is. But um, if you have oily skin and you feel like your under eye concealer creases, you I guess could do the baking method if you want. Okay, so I've set that, now I can set the rest of my face. So if you wanna minimize pores, using a, um, a no color translucent powder can uh, help you there by pressing it over those areas where you have more noticeable pores. Like for me, that's right here. Like it literally looks like an orange peel on my face. So I like to use that damp beauty sponge to press that powder onto those more pory, porous areas. <laughs> So I also have, um, you know, some forehead lines because again, I'm 34 years old and I haven't, I haven't done anything to make them not be here. So they're there. Um, so I kind of just press the powder into those areas too, the ones that are more prone to creasing because your, your face is expressive. Like that's what faces do. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with expression lines. I think that it means that you've, you've laughed, you've, you've cried and you've lived your life. So 
Um, I'm just going over the rest of my face, pressing this powder on. You can do this with a brush, but again, you have the sponge out already. Might as well use it, not dirty a brush. You could use a brush, but I find that my skin is already so dry and kind of easily irritated that when I sometimes use a brush, certain days, it just doesn't like it and it feels like irritated. So that is what the RCMA foundation looks like, slash Limelight Botanical Foundation looks like when it is applied with a damp beauty sponge and set with the RCMA No Color Powder. I did prime, like I said, with the first base spray primer. Um, you can use more moisturizing primers. You can use silicone based primers um, if you want. Like I said, I have, and you're gonna find a lot of people that disagree with that, but I just like to use them sparingly. So maybe just in the more um, pore heavy, line heavy areas, and then out here in other areas, you can use your more hydrating primers. Um, really whatever works for you. I think you know your skin type and once you figure out what your skin likes, that's probably gonna be the best method for you. For me, happens to be a damp beauty sponge. Okay, so there's an up close look. It shouldn't look like makeup. It should look like my skin, but a much, much better version of it. Okay, so I did put some bronzer and blush on and I did fill in my eyebrows because um, I just didn't look like a real person. But hopefully this how to apply limelight botanical foundation tutorial has been helpful. I know there's a learning curve with this foundation, so I felt like this video was important to do. But of course, if you have any questions or you wanna know what shade you would be, feel free to comment below and I can try to help you there. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.